Good evening, everyone. Welcome to First United Methodist Church uh, Word of Encouragement Bible Study. We have, uh, we have uh, this is our second week of uh, the fruit of the Spirit. It's called the Spiritual Living Study. So we're on the second word, which is joy. Before we begin the study, we would like to uh, lift up some people in prayer. I know I have a personal friend named Carly. Her, her, her son is in the hospital in ICU with, with uh, COVID, and we want to lift that family. His name is Tyler. Lift him up in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. And also, Lord, we want to keep our church and our community in prayer. Uh, pray for those who are dealing with the, the fire, forest fires that are going on because of the dry nature of our country, the lack of rain. I ask that you continue to lift those families up that have to to run and hide and, uh, and that maybe some of them have lost their life in the fire. We want to keep those people in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Also, I want to keep keep uh, those that are on our prayer list uh, of, of the congregation that are, are sick and shed in on our sick and shed in list. Keep them in prayer as well. Lord, in your mercy. Keep this 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 congregation, this church, and our country, and our in the in the world in prayer. Because Lord, we definitely need more people praying that our land will be healed. Lord, in your mercy, and also keep Chuck and his family in prayer. Jan, they're faithful, and Fran, and they are faithful to this Tuesday Bible study. Please keep their families and their loved ones in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. And I thank you, God, for 61 years of living. My personal gratitude to you for keeping me healthy and keeping my body and my, my mind some way, somewhat functional. Because <laughs> it depends on who you ask. My wife is taking something wrong with me. So, so thank you, Lord, for, for maintaining my health and my sanity. And the Lord, in, in your mercy, thank you. Let us, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time that we will spend looking at your word and how can we implement it into our lives. We lift up some names to you, Father, some prayers and some concerns and some joys. We thank you, Father, for already being in the mix of working these things out. I also want to pray for this study that it be pleasing unto you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's dig deep into it. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about love. And I, I told you, I, I, if I was doing the nine fruits of the Spirit, if I was the writer of the nine fruits of the Spirit, I would have put love last. But God put love first because love is the most important element of the fruits of the Spirit. Because without love, we couldn't do the other eight. And so I, I compared it to this, this book. Love is a Love, it binds everything together. These pages are many, but it's bound together by this binder that puts the book together. The same way God's love is with us. It puts everything in context. It keeps us in control. Love keeps us bounded together. I read scripture, Acts, uh, I mean Galatians 5, 19. It talks about how we used to live. Uh, Acts 5, 19 and 23 says this. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, immaturity, impurity, I'm sorry, and debauchery, adultery, and witchcraft, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, friction, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and, and, and the lack. Of, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Galatians 5, 19 and 23. 
See, at one time, you could probably find yourself in, in the flesh in some, some way in order, some of the words that I use. Some of us might have fits of rage, selfish ambitions. There might be some dissension, some evilness, some things like that are going on in your life at one time. God warned us through this scripture that if we continue living this way, then we will not see or inherit the kingdom of God. So he gives us an opportunity, even though he knew this is where we were. So you graduate to the, to the fruit of the spirit, to the spiritual blessings that Christ has for us. Once we relinquish the flesh and stop letting the flesh guide us and lead us, then we become heirs to the kingdom of God through the spiritual nature that we, we have. So joy. We talked about love now, joy. Joy uh, watch this. Joy. We get, we get joy in music. We get joy in relationships. We have a, a semblance of joy of a well-done job. We have joy in a healthy life living. There are best fleeing moments in our life. See, those type of joys don't last. They're predicated on people's feelings and emotions. They're predicated on what the world will see you as and accept you as. See, this joy that I'm talking about that Christ give is a, is a, a, a joy that's way down in your soul, that no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what the circumstances, and, 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 and times when things doesn't look good in your life, when things are, when you lose a loved one, when you, you, you have a loss, in a relationship, when things are not going well at your job, when things are all in, in a chaotic state, you still, as believers, should walk around with a joy in your spirit. You should walk around with a smile on your face because your joy doesn't come from the world. So if the world didn't give it, how can the world take it? It comes from knowing and having this relationship with Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, we have some believers that go with the wind, like the waves at the ocean at the beach that comes in that, that, and then goes out. We have believers that the same way emotionally, when everything is going their way, they have joy in, in the Christ. In Christ, When things are not going bad, you can tell they have a long, droopy face. You know, they sad and, and oh, woe me and all these type of things going on in their life. But those type of Christians are not what I'm talking about today because they're, they're tossed to and fro. I'm talking about the one who's anchored, anchored in the love of Jesus Christ and know where their joy comes from because he will never leave nor forsake us. He's always there with us. This joy is something that's deep way down in your soul that no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what I'm faced, my joy is in the Lord. My joy is not in circumstances, situations, or people, or relationships. My joy doesn't come from that. My joy comes from knowing who Christ is. My joy is even in the sickest moment of my life. My joy is in Christ. In the moments when I, I feel that I'm separated on the lost relationships or having financial or physical dif difficulties with my body, my joy is still found in the Lord. Remember we talked about John 15, 4 through 5. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branches can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You remember when I read the first part of, of Galatians 5, when we're in the flesh, we can do nothing that's right, nothing that is pleasing to God, nothing but self-gratification. It's worldly uh, uh, gratification that you seek when you're in the flesh. So you're, you're, you're nothing without Christ. You, you don't have no joy. You don't have no peace because your joy is predicated on your emotions and your feelings. Your joy is always in situations and people. You're always seeking approval from people for your joy. 
And when you don't get it, when your emotions, you wake up in the morning, you just feel like having a bad day, you don't have any joy because it's all in your feelings, all on how you feel and think. See, see, when you're connected to God, when you stay connected to the vine, the source, your spirit is always full of love and joy, no matter what you're feeling. No matter what's going on in that day, if you had a bad day, it's still a good day because of who you serve and who you, who's in you. Bible says greater is he is in you than he that is in the world. So when we realize that our joy doesn't come from people, places, things, or situations, it comes from the Lord. Uh, I want to share this with you. His name is Horatio Spartacus. He's a songwriter in the 1800s. In 1800, in November 1873, he sent his wife and his four daughters on a steamship to go into Europe. On that way to Europe, a, another ship ran into them, and the ship was began to sink. His wife was rescued, but he lost his four daughters. After losing his four daughters, he got reconnected. The telegram got to a ratio, and he went to his wife, and they got on a steamship. And when they were getting close to where his daughters lost their life, he wrote this song. It's well with my soul. That's the type of joy that he has. That song has been rewritten and sung so many times. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul, no matter the circumstances that I go through, it's well with my soul. How many of us could go through this and go and still praise God? He didn't have us. This song is not about sadness of the loss of his daughters. It was about praising God. You go look, read the song to for yourself. It's I would sing it to you, but I don't have no parents here today. So, so it's well with my soul no matter what's the situation. Can you say it's well with your soul when you lost people you love, when you, when you lost a job, when you don't know where your next meal is coming from? Is it still well with your soul? John 15, 10, 11 says, if you keep my commands, you remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's command, and you remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Scripture is telling us that joy that you feel emotionally is just like vapor. It's going to disappear. He's telling you the only way you're going to have complete joy it's to remain in me and my love, just like the vine was telling us we must remain in the vine so that we can be the branches that Christ called us all to be. So that this joy won't be just a fleeting moment, but it'll be an everlasting joy in your soul and your, in your spirit that, 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 that everyone can see that joy. I was talking about the long-faced Christians who, who still are, 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 are up and down and all around. People who are lost can't see the light and the joy of Christ in them because they're still carrying this, un, this, this unfavorable joy, this joy that predicate on their emotions. So how can you show people how to live a life that is full of joy when you, your joy is up and down and all around. Horatio showed us how. He lost his four daughters and he still praised God. To lose people in your life that you love is a hard thing. But your joy is not found in the loss of them, your joy is still found in Christ. We all know that we live to die. That's part of our journey in life. 
So when things happen that way, you got to remember his love is made perfect in us and our joy is made complete when we remain in him. So yes, there are days that I might want to be droopy faced. I know there's days when you don't want to get out of bed. I know there's days when you don't see your way out. But remember, take a deep breath. Say, my joy is found in the Lord. My joy is found in the Lord. My joy is found in the Lord. Philippians 4 and 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice in the Lord always, every day, all day, because it's his day, and he's good, he's, he loves us, and his deep emotional love that he has for us leads to joy. This joy is, is something that's so deep down in your soul that you know that you know who he is, that you know that whatever I'm dealing with, whatever situation I'm in, that God is with me. That gives me joy. That gives me strength. That makes me get out of bed every day. That makes me face the day each day on his own merit because each day is a day that God has made and I will rejoice and be what? Glad in that day because God made this day. He created this day. So why should I cover my head up and not want to go outside? Why should I be ashamed of who I am in Christ? Why should I not go out and face the giants and the Goliaths of the world? Why shouldn't I go out and face the obstacles that may be in that day? Because my joy is not found in the giants of life or the obstacles of the life or, or, the, or the predication of my emotions and my feelings. My joy is found in Christ. And when I, when you root it in Christ, when you give him his time in, 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 in prayer, when you spend time alone with him and reading the scriptures, he grows inside of you. It becomes your, your first nature is to have joy. Cause you, you had, like a skin, you had, like a snake, you had shedded the skin of the flesh off. And you put on the spirit of Christ. And the spirit of Christ produces certain things. It produces love and joy and peace. But when you had that skin of the flesh on, you produce sexual morality, impurity, chabacry, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, fraction, Envy, drunkenness, or is in the lack of. I'm telling you, this is the transcending part of our life when we come to Christ. You share that. You, you get rid of that. You're not that person anymore. First Corinthians say you become a new creature in Christ. So now that I'm new in Christ, I am adopted into the kingdom of Christ. I'm, I, I become heirs to the throne. I'm, I'm not the same robber that I was 20 years ago. I am new in Christ. So now I'm doing a new thing. My spirit is different. I love different. I see different. I hear different. I talk different because I am now in the spirit of Christ, led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit leads us into uh, to, into a better relationship with Christ. The Holy Spirit leads us through the, the trickery and the debauchery of this world. The Holy Spirit gives us joy when we should be sad. The Holy Spirit gives us peace of mind when we should be losing our mind. The Holy Spirit gives us a, a, a time to love when we should be hating. The Holy Spirit and the spirit that we produce through the joy of Christ and, and staying connected to the vine it gives us a different attitude, a different way to live. And I'm telling you, it is the best way to live because you don't ha carry all this unwanted stuff on your back. You don't carry all this hatred and this bigotry upon you, all these things you used to do and have to lie about that you don't have to lie in them or you're free. When God sets you free, you're free indeed. Nehemiah says, go. 
enjoy. Choose food and sweet drink and send some of those to those who have nothing to prepare. This day is holy to the Lord. This is the part. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. He's my strength. So when I'm weak, the Bible says he's strong in me. So that means when we submit, when we realize that I don't belong to me no more. When you realize you start making selfish decisions, when you start making decisions based on Christ, you don't belong to yourself anymore. You become this new individual. You become this new person in Christ. You start thinking and, and sharing and loving and, and always smiling. People say, well, he's always happy. You know, uh, I, I heard, heard, heard a guy said, a uh, man asked him, why are you always smiling? He said, he said, because I have the joy of the Lord. He said, no, can nobody be that happy? You think the man was just faking. He said, you're not real. You know? How can you just lose your mother and you're smiling? That's not real. That's fake. See, the world don't understand. The world can't see what you see. The world don't understand him or don't know his voice because they don't belong to him. They belong to the the father of this world, which is Satan. So they can't hear or can't comprehend what Christ is doing in you and the joy that you have, that, that seriousness that you have for God and that relationship because you're connected to the vine. When you're connected to the vine, Sister Jan, don't nothing run your way. Don't nothing surprise you. Don't nothing hurt you. You, you, you might get, you know, ooh, staggered a little bit, you know, but you may sway a little bit, but you're not going to be removed because the word of God is rooted deep inside of you. And when the word of God is rooted deep inside of you, you have joy. The enemy comes to destroy, but Christ comes to give life and give it more abundantly. And life is found in the joy of Jesus Christ. Having that loving relationship with him, then you start producing these different things. See, you can't expect an apple tree to produce oranges. You can't uh, expect an orange tree to uh, produce cherries. A pear tree cannot make grapes. So when I'm in Christ, if you say you are in Christ, I say that with parentheses, you should be producing these fruits of the Spirit. Love, Joy on a daily basis. But see, some of us Christians, we might produce that fruit maybe two, one day a week on Sundays. The rest of the day, you, 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 you witchcraft and hatred and discord and jealousy. Then you come into church, holy than thou, making any sense, have fits of rage, even in the church. Amen? Because we see that and know that you're not producing the fruit of Christ. And they'll say, don't, you're not supposed to judge me. This is what I tell them that I heard a professor say. He said, no, I'm a fruit inspector. So I can tell what fruit you're producing. That makes sense? So I know who you are through what you do. I know who you are and who you serve the way you act and treat people. I know who you are by the fruit that you are producing. Because God has given me wisdom through the Holy Spirit to become a fruit inspector. A fruit inspector knows his fruit. And he knows when it's ripe. He knows when it's rotten. He knows when it's, it's the best time to sell and get rid of the fruit. Because when you're in a relationship with God, he gives you eyes and ears and a heart and compassion for people. The biggest harm we can do as believers is say we know the Lord and do the opposite of what the Lord is about. We have watered down the word of God so much. I'm chasing a rabbit here. We have watered the word of God so much that people who are lost are confused. The church has confused people. Confused people. How can a believer 
go and act like a non-believer? How can you say you are, you, you're producing a fruit of the Spirit when you got hatred, when you got fits of rage and selfish ambition, dissension, frank, uh, fractions, and, and, and things like that in your life? Because that, a non-believer has that. It should be something different about us. It should be something that makes us stand out in a crowd. That we are producing the spirit of love and joy. Next week we'll be talking about peace. Peace that only comes from the, the first two. So all these are connected now. I'll I, I share that with you next week. How they're all in order and, 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 and they connect. The dots. Love equals joy. The love of Christ, the compassion of Christ brings about joy in your life. And then next week, that joy, the love and that joy will bring about peace. It's just like making a cake. And we talked about last week, you can't skip the steps. You got to go with the love. You know, when you make cakes, you can put a pinch there, a pinch there. You, you can make it like you want to make it. And, it, you know, it might not taste like grandma's, but it, 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 may, it tastes the way you want it to taste, right? So, but this, the spirit of the Lord, you got to follow the steps. You got to take the love and then the joy and then next week the peace. The reason why, because Christ is mixing the cake. It's not going to taste like you want it to taste. It's going to taste like Christ wanted to taste. And when it tastes like Christ wanted to taste, it's going to be good for the soul. The soul, it won't cause diabetes. It won't cause you to get fat. It'll cause you to have the spirit of love, joy, and peace. Amen? Again, thank you, Chuck and Fran and Jan, for being here. And for those of you who are watching live on Facebook, I pray that something was said to help you on your spiritual journey to know that you should be producing the fruit of the spirit. There's a difference in the flesh. And that's a different of the spirit. So you can't serve two masters. My sister, we have a we have a, a family thing, and my sister gave a scripture where you can't serve two masters. You can only serve one. So if you have shed the skin off of the spirit, the flesh, and accepted the fruit of the spirit through the love of Christ, then you should only be bearing one one spirit and living in one way. Love, joy, next week will be peace. Again, the peace and the joy that I have in Christ, I can't even begin to tell you. Uh, 61 years of living and I, I done been in the flesh. I done done everything, that the, everything. But this is the best time in my life these last 19 years. Serving the Lord. And I have joy in my heart. I have peace in my heart. And that joy and the peace that I have, I will not allow anyone or any situation or any person, anything to separate me from that. Because God gave it to me, and only God can take it from me. Not the world, not people, not places, not things, not situations. Only God. And God give it. And once God give it, you put it in his hand. And once you're in his hand, the enemy can't snatch it or take it. So I'm encouraging you, someone may be struggling today, may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right where you are, right where you are, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. John 10 and 9 says, Conf confess with your mouth, believe within your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Step one. Step two in John 3 and 3 says you got to be born again of the spirit. Once you be born again of the Spirit, it take you over to Corinthians. First Corinthians say you become a new creature in Christ. Old things pass away. You're made brand new. So shed off the skin. And right where if you made your home a confession before God, let us pray. The Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are watching. We thank you for those who may have, for the very first time, confess their faith to you, Father. Let them shed off their skin of the flesh. And receive the spirit of the Lord. And let, let, let that be the guiding force in their life. Let that joy, that love and that joy. And next week that peace reign in their lives. Because Lord, knowing you 
is better than knowing the world. That's greater is he in us than he that is in the world. So, Lord, we thank you for those who are watching that may, may change their life forever. And thank you for, the, for, for me and my story. Thank you for Jan and, and Fran and that other guy, Chuck, for being here today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. 7 o'clock. 6, 6 30, I'm sorry, but it's 7 o'clock when we're over. Chuck laughed, he got me all messed up. Have a good day.